This is episode 46 of the Just Ask Joey podcast. And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. All right, hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I am your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over idiocy. Today's topic, police brutality and how to end all of these protests. Kaepernick, Chicago, Dallas, Baltimore, Jeremy Lane, Eric Reed. And whoever else is going to be kneeling down during the national anthem on either whether it's Thursday night or Sunday when the season officially kicks off, how can we stop all of this? So what I would like to do is just kind of let's get a little perspective on other jobs and kind of see how it would apply to these police jobs. So let's just say you're a baseball player. And when it gets to the biggest games, the playoffs, the World Series, and you're a great hitter, when it comes down to crunch time and you can't hit, let's say like Alex Rodriguez, for instance, you get to the big games, you're, you get all these huge numbers and all this stuff when it doesn't count, but when it actually counts, you can't perform. Now, what would your feelings be with that, about that person? you would probably want not want them on your team because they may help you get to the big game. But when it comes to crunch time and they can't perform and they can't help you win the big game, really, what's the point of having them on the team? You know, maybe a little bit more serious. Let's say you go in to get a leg amputated for whatever reason. Let's say you got diabetes or something. You go in and you go, my right leg is jacked up. I need to get my right leg amputated. And you go in and the doctor amputates your left leg. Would you want that doctor practicing on other people? Probably not. But when we have a situation where a police officer mistakes his taser for a gun and somebody dies, or the officer mistakes somebody pulling out their wallet for pulling out a gun, or the officer misinterprets somebody coming at them in a threatening manner with them actually stumbling the other direction, and in all those instances, somebody dies, why would you want that person on the police force anymore? And I'm not talking just for the public safety. I'm talking for other officers. Why would you want somebody on your force that is not able to properly diagnose a situation and know a gun from a drill or a wallet or be able to assess a situation as life-threatening or something that is manageable, why would you want them next to you when you go out every day? Because theoretically, you sign up to be a cop. You basically are signing up to do a job where every single day could be your last day. Every traffic stop could be your last traffic stop. That's a lot of pressure. And not everybody can do that job. So when somebody is blatantly showing you that they cannot do that job by not being able to tell between a drill and a gun or a fake gun and a real gun or the actual severity of somebody holding a knife and what threat that really is on your life and your, the, your fellow officer's life, if you have somebody that can't assess that situation, can't assess danger, why would you want them on your team? I don't understand it. If I'm a doctor and I work at a hospital and somebody's cutting off the wrong legs or somebody's misdiagnosing something or somebody is missing something very important and somebody loses their life, for the good of the hospital, I don't want them on my team anymore. And this is the thing. I was just thinking just sheer numbers. So you have all these protests, you have people shooting at cops, you have 
uh, to- social unrest. You have people talking about their athletes kneeling, and you already know my my opinion on kneeling. I, I don't think it does anything, but because you should already really should already be aware of what's going on. But when you think of the sheer number of people that are police officers, not necessarily, not just police officers, sheriffs, FBI, anybody that is sworn in to protect and serve, wears a badge, carries a gun, that kind of stuff, those kind of jobs. There are 900,000 in the United States. It's close to a million, quote unquote, cops or officers in the United States. And you have major, major uh, turmoil and unrest going on in major cities all over the United States. It's a constant topic on the news, on social media, everything. And when you think about the actual numbers, so this is just an average. So over the last three years, there have been 15 uh, very high profile cases where an officer used excessive force on an individual and they died. Whether they were in the commission of a crime or not is not the point. Just listen to the point. They were 15. So let's do a little mathematics here. So there are five people a year, the last three years, that have died by the hands of a cop. And generally, these five people died by the hands of one cop. It's not like, 40 cops on the force were shooting this one person. It's like one cop in a situation that acted differently than the other cops in the situation. So five incidents per year, 900,000 officers, five cops. So for five cops, and let me just give you this number here. So the percentage of cops that are basically causing havoc and total social unrest in this country is 0.0000005%. That's it. So all those cities or counties or municipalities or whatever, whatever, whoever is employing those officers, you guys are willing to lay down on the grenade for somebody who one can't do their job, and we know they can't do their job because they have shown you they can't do their job because somebody is dead. Either they assessed somebody coming after them that was BS, that was on video and shot them, Chicago, or they didn't secure somebody in the back of a van and by the time they got to the by the time they got to the police station, the person was almost dead, Baltimore. They're showing you that they cannot do their job. And you're going to lay on the grenade for somebody that can't even do the job that you do well? Well, why do you want them on the force? Why do you want to turn your city upside down with social unrest for somebody that cannot do their job? Five cops a year. They showed you they couldn't do their job. It turned out it was a toy. It turned out it was a wallet. There were two guys on one and there was no reason for them to shoot the guy. The guy was on the ground and he pulled out his gun instead of a taser. They're showing you that under high pressure situations, when it counts the most, they cannot do their job. When you can't do your job, you can't do your job. This is not just for, you know, everybody's going police versus society, police versus the community, blah, blah, blah. It's not cops, officers, guys listening to this. So many of you do your job well. So many of you, such a ridiculously high number, which is why when Kat brings up the point of, oh, they're, you know, you need more training to do makeup or hair or whatever he said than you do to be, to be a cop. Now, maybe hours wise, maybe that's true, but it's not the quantity of the training. It's the quality of the training. And just with sheer numbers. Now, granted, I'm not talking like all these every every other cop is like an A plus cop, but we're talking about like major incidents where you kill somebody that shouldn't be killed, basically. So you take those numbers, you have 
895,000 police officers that didn't kill somebody, which means your training numbers are actually pretty good. High school diploma, college diploma, master's degree, whatever the requirements are, six months, a year, two years, whatever your training is, those numbers are pretty good. And I don't think it's the training because if it was the training, there would be a lot more dead people than there are. And I just, I keep coming back to that number and go, why would you let these five crap cops bring down the view of police officers all over the country? It may not be, maybe you go to court and decide it's not criminal. And granted, I don't even know how the hell it can't be criminal. If your job is to serve and protect and you don't do your job right and somebody dies, there's an issue there. Like the, high, the standard should be higher for police officers than it should be for the general public because we're not professionals. You guys are. But regardless of that, it's not criminal. You at least should not be a cop anymore. You should go, oh, hey, guess what, dude? That, that guy you shot? Yeah, it was a toy. So you're going to have to go. You're fired. Oh, hey, remember that gun that you said the guy had that he saw you, he flashed a gun? Uh, he actually didn't have a gun on him. So you're going to have to pack your stuff and leave. Oh, remember that lady you shot uh, in front of her house? Well, she didn't have a semi-automatic uh, rifle like you thought she did. Uh, that was a that was a drill like for drilling stuff in your home and you and you shot her. Uh, so you're going to have to leave. How easy is that? Problem solved. So the public knows. When a cop sucks at their job, bye-bye. And that makes us feel better. And the cop that has to go out with that cop knows that, okay, the police force cares enough to let somebody go that can't do their job. You know who's you know who that's going to save? That's going to save your life. That's going to save somebody else's life on the force. That's going to keep your family from having to worry about this cop that's not handling stuff well going out with you because your life's on the line now because of that cop that couldn't tell the taser from the gun your life's on the line when that cop thought the guy that had no weapons on him was a grave enough threat to be shot what other bad decisions are they going to make think about the stress that that puts on you think about the stress that that puts on your family on your kids on your wife your husband your boyfriend your girlfriend whatever your parents get the people off the force that can't do the job that's all people are asking for. So all this stuff like they're doing in San Jose, they're going to churches and stuff and cops are sitting down saying, hey, this is why we do this and this is why we do that, blah, blah, blah. It's dangerous out there. Hey, guess what? Nobody thinks that being a cop is not dangerous. That's why a lot of people don't do it because people don't want to go to work and go, oh, am I going to die today? That's why they don't do it. But just because you want to do it doesn't mean you can do it. And this seems to be one of the only jobs that they will blatantly show you that they cannot do the job, yet they are still allowed to have the job. That doesn't make sense. The standards should be higher. I understand your union strong. Of course it is. You guys represent people that protect people. But don't abuse the power by leaving in crappy cops. It's only going to hurt your force. Not only does it hurt the, the relationship with the community and the city, but it's going to hurt your force. Why would you want some weak-ass cop going out there protecting your back, protecting your city, protecting your community? You want to solve all this social unrest? When somebody shoots a guy, when somebody chokes a guy out, and it turns out to be the guy didn't have a weapon, your tactics were applied incorrectly and somebody died, you couldn't secure the prisoner in the back of the car well, you shot somebody who didn't have a gun at all. You shot somebody after. You, when you don't follow procedures, when you don't do your job, you get let go. Especially if somebody dies. I don't see what the issue is with that. I don't know what the holdup is with that. I don't know why you would want them on your force. I don't know why you would want them as a partner. I don't know why you would want them protecting your family. Because most cops work in the cities that they live in. And that person that can't do their job is protecting your family too. Do you want them to come to your house when you have an emergency? How are they going to react? What are they going to think? What are they going to see as a major threat? What are they going to see not as a major threat? What are they going to miss? We don't know. They obviously have made poor choices before when the, when it really counted. Are they going to make a poor choice again? Whose life is going to be lost? 
and what's the overall cost to not only the city, but the county, the state, and the country. Officers, union reps, let go the cops that can't do their job well. When the other person doesn't have a gun, when the other person's not an eminent threat, and they die, that officer cannot do their job anymore. Please, just like any other profession, when you mess up as a lawyer, when you mess up as a doctor, when you mess up as a mechanic, when you mess up as a garbage man, when you show that you can't do your job because you make poor decisions, you get let go. It's time to start letting people go. Let the public know that you're not only protecting and serving your job, but you're protecting and serving us as well. I'll see you guys soon. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Go, go, go.